Hello, Wisdom Seekers, and welcome to Wisdom Seeker Live podcast for this week. Glad to have you with us. Hope you can uh, join in uh, when you join. Hope that you will let us know where you're joining from. It's always interesting to learn where our audience uh, is coming from. And um, today we're going to have an open mic, again, where the participants can um, determine the topic and hope that you will uh, uh, raise topics that are uh, of importance to you, questions that uh, you want to find wisdom on, and uh, really uh, let us uh, talk about those things. And so glad to uh, uh, have this time together. As always, we want to talk about uh, what is wisdom from a standpoint of wisdom seekers. And wisdom's a journey, a journey uh, that begins with knowledge. And um, we um, gain that knowledge either uh, just by being alive or uh, formally through uh, school or training or whatever. And uh, certainly a great first step, but not where we uh, stop or shouldn't stop. <clears throat> much of our culture, unfortunately, does uh, stop and uh, land there and not try to go any further. Second step in the journey or the process of gaining, uh, seeking gaining wisdom is to develop understanding. And understanding is where we take our knowledge and apply it in our experience what we do to use it to uh, solve problems and get answers and uh, make practical use of the knowledge we've gained, which is another great step. But again, that is not where we need to stop. We need to continue on into the journey and that journey taking us into the step of becoming wise. And wisdom is about uh, taking our knowledge and our understanding and beginning to see it from an outside perspective, outside of ourselves, begin to see that we are there to uh, use our knowledge and our understanding, not just for our own needs and purposes, but to begin to see how it affects others around us so that we begin to make decisions in the bigger picture. And for those of us that uh, of our spiritual bent, we like to think of it in terms of being uh, the uh, uh, seeing through God's eyes. So that's what we mean when we talk about wisdom on Wisdom Seeker Live. And uh, welcome, Ibrima. Glad to have you with us today. And so uh, we have an open mic today to allow the everyone that would like to raise questions so that we can address things and seek wisdom together. Uh, good morning, or I'm sorry, good day, uh, Ram Chander. Glad to have you with us as well. And so there are a lot of different things out there that uh, are on our radars, a lot of things going on in the world that we could uh, talk about. Of course, all of the uh, political and economic concerns out there and trying to find wisdom in our lives in regards to how to work with those uh, concerns and be able to get the right perspective, a wise perspective on them. Another topic that's always of uh, interest and of, of value to our conversation is that of education because it is such a big topic. One thing that I do want to mention before we get too far into things is uh, I want to uh, say happy Independence Day to India. Today is the independent 75th uh, year of India's independence. So I want to uh, wish everyone uh, of our friends in India or uh, those that uh, were originally from India a happy Independence Day and celebrate with you uh, this special time uh, for India. Appreciate <clears throat> uh, being a part of, uh, I mentioned education in India, 
good. Hello, Lydia. Hello, Ed Mario. Glad to have you. And uh, the uh, one of the things that I am currently involved in, and I recently went to India to be a part of an event for International Institute of Influencers, which is an education entity. And glad to say that uh, amazing trip and uh, we're getting an opportunity to do things to help change education for the better, to build uh, on uh, a better way of approaching education. And our vision mission for uh, III, as we call it, or Triple I, is humanization of education, getting away from production style education. So we, uh, are uh, glad to celebrate uh, with India and its Independence Day and being also being a part of uh, having an impact on education. And again, today, I don't want to uh, drive the topics. I hope that uh, those participating will ask a question or mention a topic that we they would like for us to uh, discuss. Otherwise, again, there are plenty of things out there that we need to seek wisdom on and uh, very much uh, have an opportunity out there. One of the topics itself is seeking wisdom in that uh, we need to make that a priority anymore because it has lost its priority in our decision making and our choices of how to behave and spend time and how we prioritize. And unfortunately, the byproduct of not having that as a priority is some of what we see around us. The loss of judgment, loss of uh, instinct, the loss of discernment, uh, and uh, even the loss of what we call common sense is all, I believe, a byproduct of our cultures no longer valuing seeking wisdom out. We are have decided culturally that knowledge is the important thing, but knowledge isn't just the beginning of the journey into growing and to becoming wise. Uh, education, we continue to be challenged in education. We watch and see education problems for our young people not aligned well with what's going on in the uh, world, in the workforce. We are, we just still are not addressing that problem as far as from an institutional education standpoint. We continue to push young people into one direction, and that is to go to a university after high school. And as a process of doing so, we are misguiding a lot of young people because first of all, there are other viable options for education pursuits. And uh, with the uh, US, I'm, I can't speak to other countries on this one quite as much, but the cost of education, I think it's true across, uh, it's a global problem, not just a US problem. And so, we uh, just need to address that and we need to uh, refocus or realign our approach on education. Uh, welcome, ATIF. Good to have you, uh, sir. Been a while. So, education is another topic that we need to really, really approach uh, in a wise fashion because we are not making good choices. We're not setting good priorities culturally uh, for this. Another topic that uh, we talk about, Anton uh, and I, my business partner, and I talk about uh, in the uh, Human SOS show is stress. Everybody, I, or I say everybody, that's always a dangerous thing to say everybody or nobody. Many people are continuing to walk and live in stress to a point of stress that is really having. Uh, real effects on people's lives. It is causing them to be uh, emotionally and mentally challenged. It's causing them to be even physically uh, affected by it. 
And so a lot of different uh, areas of concern and a lot of need to seek out wisdom. Let's see here what uh, Ed Mario's comment is. It says our lives and our business need people who give and not only receive, who just wants to get attention, who surrenders, uh, who surrenders pays attention, who only wants to receive, brags about success, who gives, take, who gives and takes responsibility for failure. Those who only want to receive intend to be better than others who gives strives to do their best for others. Yes, I think what you're uh, bringing up, Ed Mario, is a problem with a lack of humility in our culture. People are uh, spending a lot of their time from a very selfish standpoint, making choices, including the attitudes that you describe of taking and not giving. And always bragging about success but not uh, focusing on other people and so yes that's a real problem too and there's a there has to be wisdom in regards to it because to always just give is can be a problem as well there i know a lot of people that are real givers in fact i struggle with this at times that I, I enjoy giving. I, I find that a great blessing. The challenge is that at times that we all need to be willing to receive. And some of us struggle with that. It's a tough one because we would rather give than receive, which sounds good on paper, sounds good on the surface, but reality is it's not. It's not healthy. It has there has to be a balance. There has to be wisdom even in giving so we really need to consider that and uh lydia makes the comment that blessed are the generous cheerful giver indeed uh, we definitely are not over indexed right now on people that give we are still as a culture very self-centered and we're very much about our needs our desires before others that is where our culture is in general and so we really need to begin to focus in on how do we give back how do we get away from being self-centered and of course as we mentioned seeking wisdom is one of the ways to do that because a byproduct of seeking wisdom is we see how our decisions our attitudes affect others because it's a purposeful part and so it's uh, the value of seeking wisdom is very widespread it, when we learn to do it, when we take the time to grow in wisdom. Let's see here. And Mario has another comment. Business is business. As I said, the people here called them merchants. But what they meant was that business is business, not life and religion. That's another tough topic. We have become culturally in such a way that we seem to want to separate out life and business. And I understand that. And for my generation, that was the normal way of doing things. You went to work and you did your work thing. And then you came home and did your home thing. And they were considered two different complete parts and the reality is that even then, I mean, it worked to some degree just because that's the way the cultural had been uh, set up and that's how we had been conditioned. But the reality is, if you look back, even then, that uh, was not a good, healthy approach. We ended up having people almost uh, having to try to live two separate lives even. And that's not the way we are. We have life, we live life. That is our primary purpose, is to be humans and to live life at its best. And when we do keep that as the perspective and understand that work and business is a subset, just like school, just like different stages with family. When we are first married and start having children, 
we're at a different phase, our priority shifts or should. Part of the problem is it doesn't. And this uh, work life so-called balance is the challenge because we think that we've got to maintain work-life balance in the sense that we, we at times short our families. And at different seasons of life, when especially when our families are young, work should be secondary because we need to be more concerned with building character and investing in our children early on more so than providing them things because we're not talking most of the time that we are concerned about food and shelter and clothing but rather uh, having other things uh, bigger better things newer things and that should not be and is not the wise priority when you have a young family welcome uh Scanyo and rosemary good to see you as well and uh, so the the so-called work-life balance uh, is a um, in my opinion it's an unwise approach to life because again life is what we're about we're not about life and work we're about life work is a part of that and it takes up time no doubt about it but it is not all our time. In fact, if you look at uh, assuming that we work an eight hour day, five days a week, it is less than a third of our time, which just percentage wise means is not, should not be taking up our whole life. It should not be first priority in terms of how we choose our time. Uh, welcome Satish, glad to have you with us. It's been a while, good to have you back. So, going back to ed mario's comment business is business that's unfortunately the way it is still approached and it's not a healthy approach for any of us to look approach in that fashion because healthy for us is focused on living our life and being who we are and then prioritizing under that what we do from a work standpoint <clears throat> Let's see, uh, Ed Mario's got a comment here, says, and everything is undertaking two thirds must be attributed to reason and the other third to chance. If you increase the first fraction, you will be faint hearted, increase the second, you'll be foolhardy. Well, that's an interesting perspective, Ed Mario. I've never seen that quite that put that way, but certainly that we need to consider that there needs to be uh, what I like to say is not balance, but congruence that our life and the sub parts of it should work congruently together. Don't know that uh, there is uh, a formula that says two thirds this way or that way. Sometimes could be two thirds uh, in one direction. It could be most all of it in one direction depending on where we're at in our life and what season and the value of seeking wisdom is help us to understand where to set those priorities where to adjust based on the circumstances and situation that we are living in at a given time that Mario makes a comment, the secret of entrepreneurship is to have 100% conviction with only 80% of the answer. Uh, indeed, uh, that's a, a good comment, Ed Mario. Uh, we, if we're going to be about being an entrepreneur, it needs to be a deep con held conviction that it's what we need to be as a person, not just uh, as someone just seeking money that if we're being an entrepreneur, it should be a, an outpouring part of who we are, not what we want to find or do. And that's very important. And the 80% of the answer, yeah, we, uh, we in the military think in terms of 70% solution, but 80% is all right. Key message is that we don't 
uh, have all the answers all the time. We're not going to because we are not that capable. We are very capable in a lot of ways. We are blessed in many ways. We have great value as being a human being. But that doesn't mean that any of us have all of the answers all of the time. Most of us don't have lots of answers all of the time. And that's where we have to gain the wisdom to be able to evaluate, be able to understand each of the circumstances that we are dealing with and gain the wisdom of how to approach them well. Atif has a comment. Money does not give happiness. It's half truth. The whole truth is money helps in avoiding those miseries that emanate from poverty. Uh, yeah, that's a tough one, Atif. I agree with you that money doesn't buy happiness. I know that there is a trend of recent to say, well, money does buy happiness and go on to explain and justify. I personally don't believe it does because I don't believe happiness is about having things or not having things. It's not about uh, changing our circumstances. If we're dependent on our circumstances and the condition of our circumstances to seek happiness or to be happy, we're never going to be happy because our circumstances are always going to have challenges and they're going to not necessarily be the way we like them all the time. So if um, if happiness is based on what we have and buying things, I can understand where people would say money can buy happiness. But I agree that it does not. And I think that it's unwise to approach life that if you can get enough money, you can uh, based solely on that, you can be happy. I, I have to disagree with those that say you can. Let's see. Rosemary has a comment. Work-life balance was the concept that made a lot of people a lot of money running training programs that worked on paper. However, the reality of any person's life is always being present where they are. If they are at work, be there. If they're at home, be there. If they're doing anything else, do that and be present. Well put, uh, Rosemary, and indeed, that work-life balance is at least spawned a lot of so-called habits and formulas and certain ways to do things to keep that balance. When I uh, look at life, and I've been looking at it for a lot of years, life is not a straight line where we can choose a middle ground related to life. Life is more like a curved or even scrambled line. And when what we have to do is to understand how to live in each of those circumstances in balance and the balance and part of it, too, is we've got to have a basic concept of what balance is. And that is or what it's not is walking middle, finding a middle ground all the time. That's not balance. That is actually, if you really look at it closely, it's a form of mediocrity. Balance is being able to have those uh, extreme uh, good characteristics and holding them in tension. One of the ones I always like to go back to is truth and love. Uh, you never want to have those two apart because if you focus on love and compassion only, then you will make choices sometimes or help others make choices that may not be uh, wise ones because the choices need to be made and related to self-discipline or wiser choices, better uses of those choices. And if we have truth only, it becomes harsh and it causes people to get discouraged because this side of eternity, we're not going to fully grasp and live the truth. And to think that we can is going and live that way is a problem. So what we have to do is we have to have a firm grip 
on both truth and love so that as we walk this uh, curvy line of life that moves different places, different times, different seasons, is if we have a firm grasp of those, then we can adjust accordingly because there are moments when we're at work, when we're at home, when we're out in our communities where we need to take a stand and on the side of truth and tell people truth as we call it radical candor. There are times for that and that is necessary. Excuse me. And when if we're not able to do that in those times appropriately, it becomes unwise and unhealthy for us and others. In the same vein, there are times where we need uh, love and kindness and compassion more than anything. Reaching out to people to love them, to help them understand, uh, show great compassion. And as I like to say, uh, when we're in balance, we can have available to be able to lovingly kick someone in the seat of the pants and say, hey, it's time to get over it and get moving. Or other times where we're going to need to just be quiet and listen to people, maybe give them a hug, maybe give them encouragement. Sometimes those two have to occur in the uh, same moment. And But the key is to have a firm grasp on both, and then seek the wisdom to know when to move towards one or the other. So, uh, yes, I'm with you there, Rosemary. Work-life balance did mostly uh, a lot for people selling training and how-tos. Let's see, uh, Sicanio, and I apologize if I'm mispronouncing your name as a comment. Uh, as we are team, we will be glad to hear from you back. May God bless you more. Oh, I think that was a comment towards someone and uh, well put. Lydia makes the comment. <clears throat> if money buys happiness, we'll be slave to the materials and money. Indeed, uh, some of the greatest people in history, uh, examples of leaders in history had no money or had little money because it wasn't a priority, it wasn't a focus. The focus was on being about who they were and what they were here to do. And it is evident that these people were just as happy, maybe more so because they were able to carry out their purpose without being caught up in having to have money and things at so-called success in that fashion. And so, indeed, uh, you know, money, uh, if, if that's our approach, we will be slaves to things. And that's a uh, unhealthy place. In fact, wisdom better than my own says that money doesn't say money's bad, but it says the love of money is the root of evil. And we have to be careful because if we think and we operate that money brings happiness, then we're going to be very likely to look at money and love it. And that gets us into trouble. And we see that happening in our culture. Lydia also makes a comment, is the wise choices and actions that gave us happiness from within uh, within our inner peace. It is uh, the wise choices that we make that contribute and bring happiness to our life. The other thing, and this is something that uh, I uh, know I'm going to maybe unpopular on, is that we think that we're going to be happy all of the time. And we aren't. We aren't supposed to be happy all the time. And this is where I get into maybe some word choice uh, why wisdom because I believe that what we really need and really desire deep down is not happiness, but joy. And joy is not based on a feeling. It's a choice. It's based on making wise choices and being able to live with those choices. So 
sometimes I, I we talk about pursuing happiness and I appreciate it and I understand the intent and the desire, but I like to rather say what we really want to pursue is not happiness, but joy, because joy is something that will sustain for a long time. Happiness is fleeting. Happiness comes and goes. One of the most interesting things I ever had pointed out was happiness is based in what is happening. In other words, our circumstances. And if we're waiting to be happy or joyous because of circumstances, we're always going to be uh, as the, I think there's a, even a song lyric talking about chasing the wind. And we're better off not to chase the wind, but rather to find joy in life and find a place where we can be joyous and be contented. And so a lot of different aspects to that, but I think we're pretty much in agreement that money is not the solution and it doesn't do what some would like to think it does. <clears throat> uh, Rosemary makes a comment. The truth is a sub subjective concept. My truth is different to others' truth. What is right for me may upset others who I need to be mindful of, or I may be totally unaware of. Truth is an interesting concept. It's an interesting uh, principle out there and people claiming this is truth or that's truth need to be cautious in the approach. I think there is truth. I think there's some absolute truth out there, but it's limited. And I think it's limited by design because part of what we are here for is to have relationship with our uh, creator and if we find, can find somehow all truth and therefore based on that truth live, then we don't need a relationship with our creator because we have the answers in that form. And so, yeah, truth is an in, a interesting and challenging concept. I think we need to be seeking truth as often as possible and but not confuse it with uh, good factual information or whatever. Truth is something that is uh, much deeper than just a, a piece of information or a piece of knowledge. Truth is something that we have to understand and frankly needs to be understood and utilized in wisdom. That's another part of the value of having wisdom is that we recognize what is truth and what is not. And just because it can be factual doesn't make it truth. Because again, truth is a uh, different concept than just facts or information. Welcome, Chris. Glad to uh, have you with us. Let's see, you've got a, a comment. <clears throat> Raise a good point, Kevin, about our relationship to money. We need to be clear on the value of money and how important it is in our lives. Certainly, the money is a factor for all of us and something we need to keep in perspective. But, and money is not bad, not bad at all. It's, it's just an instrument. It's a tool. And what's interesting is Apparently, there is no one even absolute truth in regards to money because we look at how many different ways of having money and what they are valued at. And so uh, keeping the right priority about money is so important. And again, it's like everything in our lives, finding the balance between the value of it versus even, and this is uh, something I I may open a bit of a can of worms here, but the value of not having money too. There are moments where not having money in terms of stored wealth is even value. Again, I go back to some of the most influential leaders that impacted our world, not just at a moment in time, and, but in such a way that it impacts our, our history. It changed the course of history. 
money was not a priority. Money was not something that these people had a lot of. So again, the value of having it, the value of not having it, it's all part of a, a picture we need to consider. Uh, and let's see, Satish makes a comment, says, I thought joy is fleeting and happiness refers to peace and satisfaction in general. Satish, it's really interesting that you raise that point. Part of what we have a challenge with, and again, we need great wisdom, is understanding words and what is meant when they're used. And I think that creates a lot of problem for us. And that's why I try not to get too caught up in the exact word that is used, but look more at the principle and concept. Uh, I've heard the comment that joy is fleeting. I appreciate that. And the key is that whatever we call it, joy, happiness, a place of being positive, whatever we call it, in order to have it, it has to be based in inner health, inner well-being. And that is the key part of it, regardless of the name. So you make a, a good point about which word we use. What we need to make sure of is what we have in our minds and our hearts about a given word, but be careful as we approach other people and other situations, just because they use a given word doesn't mean that they're in disagreement with us because we use a different word. And, and understanding context, and I talk about this a lot, it is a very wise to understand the context and consider what is, uh, how it's being used by that person. So your point is a good one and certainly one we need to uh, take into account. That is where we start getting into walking wisely is when we can, again, see that big picture, see the picture outside of ourselves, see that what we do affects others and conversely what they do affects us and before we react or make judgments based on something we need to really consider the person and the situation because uh, it what we talk again to use the term happiness what we say and what we do with happiness versus what someone else does may not only be different, but may be even contradictory to each other. So we, we need to approach things very carefully. Excuse me, my nose is itching this morning. And uh, be wise in how we approach it. Um, let's see. Chris is, uh, made comments. Uh, managing an NGO, Nimble Foundation, author, I agree that money cannot be trivialized. What happens, though, is when your money no longer has any value, what is the value of the money then? It's an interesting, again, this is an interesting, challenging topic about money, wealth, and its value. Uh, as you know, Chris, that if uh, you have it, but it still has no value, then why have it? In fact, good example of that is people that have sought money and even attained money, lots of wealth. And when their health or the health of a family member fails, the value of what they attained goes away quickly. It disappears very quickly because uh, value is not about just having things. There's lots of other ways that we find value and money can be a part of that, but it is not the only way and not necessarily the best way. And so we really need to take into account the value of, of most anything for that matter. I would suggest that the most valuable thing we have as we live here on earth is time. Money can be replaced. Things can be replaced. People will come and go, but our time 
it, once we use it, once we spend it, it's gone. We cannot get that back. And so it's really funny. We will guard our money with banks and vaults and security and all that. But yet we will not value our time enough to guard it very carefully to a point of being willing to, with respect, be able to tell people no. And that gets us in trouble. Again, back to how does, how are things valued for us and for others? And one of the things we have to approach wisely is understanding that value varies from one person to the next. There is no one way to value something. Again, we need the wisdom to know how to place value on things and people uh, at different times. So good conversation in regards to money and value. Uh, let's see. Uh, Rosemary, thanks for hanging out with us. I know it's getting late in uh, Australia. Appreciate you showing up. It's always a, a blessing to have you here with us. And uh, let's see. Lydia makes. Oh, let's see. Rosemary made a comment. Mother Teresa had a purpose. She didn't have money. And that is so true. She's one of those examples, Rosemary. And I think that we do well to consider that some of us, we will have wealth and others will not. But that doesn't mean that one of us is more successful than the other. It doesn't mean that at all. And it doesn't mean that one of us is going to be happier than the other. If we're intended and designed to have wealth and we will use it wisely, then we will be contended in it. We will have the joy. But there are people that really aren't designed and their purpose doesn't involve that, but yet culturally we push people to really seek that out and make this uh, make that a big priority. Not not wise, not wise at all. <clears throat> and Lydia makes a comment that joy is from within, not circumstances. That is so key that we want joy, we want happiness, whatever term you use, if we're seeking it only externally all the time, we're not wise. We're not, and we're not going to ever be satisfied. We have to seek uh, joy, happiness, contentment as an internal effect more than an outward in effect. And so when we look at these things, we really need to consider them in light of our internal being and make it all part of a total approach. We, a healthy balance for us because of design. I like to consider things logically and our design, and I know some people will disagree with that and that's okay. But I believe that our design is that we have three parts. We have a body. That one is pretty hard to deny. We have a uh, soul. Houses our mind and our will and our emotions and where we feel and so on. And then we have a spirit. And so the key is that, especially with important life choices, that we consider all aspects of who we are in making those choices, that we consider how it impacts us totally. When we begin to do that, when we begin to live the balance of our design and we are balanced across our entire being, then life is much better. The, even when the circumstances may not be good, life is still better when we live in that fashion. Let's see here. Uh, Chris has a comment. Uh, time is a value. Our health is a value. If we don't have any more time here on this planet, are we in poor health? Money has little value. So, yes, I, people, we want to value things or 
put value on life in different ways at different times. And we need to always be considerate of how that value comes about and be careful. I, one of my pet peeves is in our culture, especially the American culture, we love everything and everybody. When we approach things in that fashion and our use of our words is so watered down, the value of that love is has little value. And when we understand what we should be saying when we speak of love, then we would use the term much more judiciously and consider that our primary purpose and focus is to love people, not things. And doesn't mean we can't like things, enjoy things, enjoy money, whatever, but that's not a priority. Our priority is loving people. And when we keep that in perspective, we will be much better and we will find the right value more often that way. And uh, Katish, Satish makes a comment that time is an invaluable resource. I agree. I would love to see people approach what they do and how they do it and when they do it with that perspective. And in fact, one, I'll give a little free tip that I learned years ago is actually in a time management class. And uh, what it was, was asking a question in your circumstances that help us to prioritize the value of our time and the value of our choices. And this question is simply this. If I do or don't do something within a certain amount of time, will people get hurt or things get broken? And the purpose of that is to begin to prioritize and place value on our time relative to our choices. And I find it to be very effective to a point that now, uh, for example, I even when get a phone call and now with call identifier, we quite often will know who it is, or in some cases we know who it isn't. And we make a value judgment. Do I answer this call at this time? And I'll even go through in my head of if I don't answer this call right now, is there going to be bad things happen? And so, again, that question helps us to consider value. And it's primarily focused on valuing our time well and choosing well how to use our time. So <clears throat> let's see. Ed Mario has a comment in the business world. Every one is paid in two currencies, cash and experience. Get experience first. Money will come later. Uh, I, I like that, Ed Mario. Yes. Uh, the value of our vocation, our job is in part the uh, money, the wealth that it brings and to be very basic to pay bills and, and function. But what we can learn and what we should learn as part of that experience is uh, equally of value too. So uh, being aware of that is how we become wise in our choices in regards to how we approach our work and how we value it, another part of it. Let's see. Ed Mario has another comment. If money is your hope for independence, you will never have it. The only real security lies in a store of wisdom, experience, and confidence. Yeah, I like that, especially the wisdom part. That's why uh, if we really are wise and want to be wise, we recognize that wisdom is much greater than wealth. And it's stated such in the Bible. And one of the people we consider to be among the wisest um, that's been among us is uh, King Solomon, considered to be a great man of wisdom. And uh, his approach when he was given the option by God, our creator, to make a choice and ask for anything rather than asking for great wealth or power or position, he asked for wisdom. And what's interesting is he was granted that wisdom 
But as a result of receiving that wisdom, he also became very wealthy and became uh, very influential and powerful. By the way, becoming wise doesn't make us perfect because also the same man, uh, Saul, I'm Solomon, apologize, got my characters mixed up there. Solomon, who is considered one of the wisest in the world, certainly made some bad choices and it resulted in circumstances and challenges that made life not so happy <laughs> or not so joyous. So wisdom doesn't guarantee that we will always make good choices. What it does guarantee is that we will make better choices than if we don't have the wisdom. And that's the key part of it. That's part of the reason that it is such a priority for me to encourage us all to seek and gain wisdom. We can seek and gain a lot of things. We can gain wealth, we can gain family, we can gain power, we can gain uh, prestige, all of those things. But if that is the primary thing that we seek all the time, we will ultimately end up not being wise and even becoming foolish. The Bible even talks about how that the wise things of the world become foolishness. And so we are uh, do well to value wisdom and seeking it and gaining it uh, as we uh, need to, including not seeking other things above it that uh, we need to seek and gain the wisdom. And when we do that, we will begin to be able to get the other things we need and do so with less misery. Many times people seek and gain things, and when they get it, they're even more miserable, in part because they realize that is not the answer to what we really truly need deep inside. And so, yeah, it's uh, important to appreciate the value of things. And of course, one of the first values, and hopefully this is a piece of wisdom that will stick with you because it's such a key important piece of wisdom is that <clears throat> we are valued we have value and it's not something that we seek out to get and try to earn because it's we can't do it we can't earn our value and we don't get our value from other people they don't give us their value. They can't. Now, unfortunately, that we look to other people to give us our value too often. And it is frustrating. It is rarely found that way. And it's also just as easily taken away. Our value is granted to us as a gift by our creator when we are born. We are born with amazing value to a point that our creator loves us and cares for us deeply. And when we can really grasp that that's where our value comes from and we can have belief and conviction in that, things change. It makes a huge difference. I know for me, growing into that, and learning how to appreciate my value as a person just has really changed things for me. And please understand the value that I have as a person, the great value I have as a person is the same value that everyone else has. And when I can learn to accept my value as coming from uh, my creator, my God, and it's not something that will change, can be affected. It is just there. It is intrinsic. When I can really live that, then I can accept it for others and I can appreciate others' value. Doesn't mean we're perfect. Doesn't mean we have it all together. 
but it means that we don't have to go looking for our value. What we begin to do is to live our value. And that is when we become what we need to be. That is when we will find joy or happiness or abundance is when we learn to live and walk in the value we have as a person. And then that helps us keep the other things, the other circumstances in perspective and in right priority. So uh, value, I think, is kind of what we're finding out is our big takeaway. What is our value and what do we value as a result? Learning how to value things well and to value them wisely is so critical and starts with us. We don't have to do anything more to have, we can do anything around And our value doesn't change. Our value is always one of great importance, being priceless in our value, because that's the way we're seen by our creator. And that is how we have been designed. And when we really grasp that, the impact is remarkable, both on us as well as others, because when we do that, it impacts our relationships remarkably. When I am not trying to prove my value and I'm accepting other people's values, I I approach things very differently. And at a minimum, it causes me not to walk into situations and relationships in a defensive posture and always trying to prove myself. Don't have to prove anything in terms of my value. Now, there are times where I need to prove my abilities uh, and prove my choices. But in terms of value, we can't add to it. We can't take away from it by anything we do. And no one else can either. Um, And so finding value is important. There's a lot of wisdom in understanding our value as well as the value of things that go on around us. And so just really think that through. Uh, Lydia makes a comment, and I agree with her completely, uh, that indeed our value and self-worth are from God alone. It is. And the, some people say, well, I don't believe in God. I, I appreciate that. Uh, I And what I hope is that you're open to considering that Uh, there may be an alternate approach because the value of being able to rest in who we are and accepting who we are and not having to prove it to other people is pretty remarkable. But hey, we're all on the journey in this life and we're all at different places and how we approach it is going to vary uh, to some degree. And uh, when we can, I think the key thing is as we approach life and we are seeking to find the wisdom in life and in our circumstances, uh, then we have a better chance of growing and finding what's really true and being able to live it and to be satisfied or as kind of an old fashioned term to live in an abundant fashion. So good conversation. Thank you for the contribution, the comments. Uh, really appreciated. I appreciate those of you that have hung with us to the end. And uh, so I hope that uh, you have, at a minimum, began to make a value to seek out wisdom. And hopefully today have maybe picked up some wisdom along the way. The uh, value of us being together is we can share our wisdom and have moments where we don't have to learn wisdom strictly through the hard way. So thanks, everyone. I appreciate you being here today, and I hope that you have a blessed week and that as you go through this week and beyond that you seek wisdom and find it so that you can begin to live in a way that we call abundance 
uh, with your life. So thanks. God bless you. Have an amazing week. And we'll be back next Monday. And we'll uh, either discuss whatever or we may have a topic. By the way, if you have a topic that you think we should discuss, by all means, put it uh, in the comments. Let us know because always open to talking about what's important to you guys. It's not just about me and what I think is important. So uh, see you next week, same time, and uh, be blessed. Bye.